It has been said that if God made anything more beautiful than the horse, he kept it for himself. Breeders, owners, and trainers of the American Saddlebred and Hackney have carefully developed and nurtured their horses and ponies to be the most stylish of all equine breeds, each possessing unrivaled beauty, athletic ability, and intelligence. Whether riding or driving, using them in the show ring or at home in the pastures, or riding and driving in non-traditional show ring competitions, these prolific breeds separate themselves from all others because of their style. The history and romance of these two breeds go back well beyond the early 1890s when both the American Hackney Horse Society and the American Saddlebred Horse Association were first formed. Although they started worlds apart, the American Saddlebred and Hackney virtually paralleled one another on their rise to prominence in the show ring of today. A product of a mix of breeds, primarily the Narragansett Pacer and the Thoroughbred, the early Saddler was a horse of choice for plantation owners and Civil War generals alike for their easy gait, docile temperament, great power of endurance, and overall beauty and expression. Southern owners used these horses for work, transportation, and bragging rights and carefully crossed the best of these Saddlers to form the horse we know today as the American Saddlebred. Known as a peacock of the show ring, the Saddlebed has proven to possess great versatility, able to excel in many settings. The Hackney traces its roots to England, as its early ancestors were known as trotting horses that could easily cover great distances of rough ground. King Henry VIII required the wealthy to keep a number of trotting horse stallions, which became known as Norfolk Trotters. In the mid-1700s, this line of horses became known as the Shale Horse, which would evolve into the Hackney Horse. In 1870, the Hackney Horse was crossed with a fell and Welsh ponies to create the Hackney Pony that we know today. The Hackney was imported to the northeast section of the United States to be used for stylish transportation. It could be found pulling carriages through the streets of the northeast major cities and eventually as motorized transportation was invented, horsemen saw the Hackney's use transformed to a show horse and pony. The American Saddlebred and the Hackney Pony eventually found themselves performing in the nation's most prestigious show rings because of their extreme athletic ability, beautiful presence, and love of performing. As these equine athletes evolved, so did their owners in usage. Decades ago, mostly the wealthy owned and exhibited these breeds. Today, families and individuals from coast to coast, both in and out of the show ring, enjoy these breeds. We invite you to join us on this journey of the aristocrats of the equine world. My name is Misty Wrigley Miller and I've been involved with the American Saddlebred for about 20 years, breeding and competing. An American Saddlebred horse shares the qualities of a great American. The horse has a wonderful work ethic. He will give you 110% to complete the task at hand. He is strong, courageous, powerful, yet can be very kind, gentle, loving, is great with children. And like most Americans, he has um, a very rich and diverse genetic background. In fact, um, he is a, shares a unique connection with us Americans as one of his forebears was a type of horse called the Narragansett Pacer. And that is the type of horse that Paul Revere rode on his famous midnight ride. So um, the American Saddlebred Horse is uniquely American and has some wonderful, wonderful traits that have been developed over the years um, as the horse helped develop America. My name's Alan Iron. I'm from Cumming, Iowa, and we do run a Hackney and Saddlebred breeding operation in addition to the training. I think the quickness, they're exceptionally smart breed, and they're very quick, and they respond to training quickly, too. You don't have to repeat things as much. Horses do learn, learn by repetition, of course, but a good hackney pony picks up real quick and it doesn't take long or he can be shown. The horses mean so much to my children and when I think back when we first started all I knew of horses was 
you know, trail horses. And sometimes you look at them and they have kind of blank stares on their face and I just think, you know, that's fine. I'm sure they have a heart and a soul, but I just don't see it. But when my first visit to take my daughter to ride an American Saddlebred and she walked in the stall and he just wrapped his neck around her and, and he just nickered and whinnied and I thought, oh, what is this horse? I've it's almost like a dog. What excites me about the American Saddlebred is his heart, his intelligence, his spirit, um, his ability to do whatever is asked of him. And um, at the same time, it, it, this is a very elegant horse. His profile is unmistakable. When, when you see his, his profile from a distance, it stands out. That is, that is an American saddlebred. The um, neck being very high set on his, his shoulders, the beautiful curve of his neck, um, his very deep, wide chest that allows for his big heart, um, very strong back, strong hind quarters, which gives him the athletic ability to do everything that we ask of this horse. Well, the amazing part about it is that once you see these kids showing in hands, and they're, you know, these kids are like five and six and seven, eight, nine, ten years old, and then as time goes by, pretty soon you see them driving ponies in the show ring, uh, pretty soon they own three or four ponies, and then you see their moms and their dads driving harness ponies or cobtails or row ponies, so it's a progression that they just, it seems like once they get in, they're hooked. As a parent, I mean, I'm not even the one that's involved with the horse, and, but I love to pet them and be with them and brush them and everything. And I just think that that's what they love about it, is that they feel the heart of the horse. The horse is so versatile and can do so many different things. Whether you're interested in competing in a show ring, the horse is able to um, be ridden, he is able to, he's a great driving horse, but also he can be ridden out on the, the trail. He's not afraid of anything, um, and he's, he'll do whatever you ask him to do. Why I would recommend a family to get involved with the Hackney Pony because it's a lifetime affair, and it's, it's a relationship between the family and the pony that never dies. You really don't have to have any previous experience to be involved in the Saddlebred. There are so many farms and, um, that have great lesson programs. Every barn is very welcoming and open to people that um, you can come in and, and get acquainted with the Saddlebred and ride a Saddlebred. And, and once you've been on the back of the Saddlebred, you'll never go back. This morning we have an adult lady who's going to take a beginner driving lessons. Uh, this lady developed an interest in saddlebred horses um, as an adult and she decided that driving would be a good place to start her horse career. At the time our instructor is giving beginner points to our driver on how to correctly hold the reins, explaining the relationship between the bit in the horse's mouth and the light touch of a driver's hands. The correct way to hold the reins and whip has been explained, and the instructor feels confident that the driver has got a command of how to stop and start the horse. He'll ask her to step up to a trot. When a person is taking a driving lesson after they've mastered starting and stopping correctly with respect to a horse's mouth, then they will begin making turns. The part of this is understanding the shafts, which are the wooden parts attached to the cart beside the horse, how they fit on the horse. Okay, remember yesterday, we're gonna be square, we're gonna be even on either side. Because if you, if you tip to your left, she's gonna shoot right. You tip to your right, she's gonna shoot left. He'll sit down. Oh, scoot up just a little bit. Okay, so your weight is over your feet because you're like a building. Roof, middle, basement. Okay. Okay, sweetie. So, walk. Now sit back right there. You sit back. Feel the contact with your bridle. That's all right. Now say trot. Big deep breath. Heels down. Look straight up at Holly. Straight on your rail. So tiny little bit of right leg. Good girl. I want you to switch your diagonal back. Good girl. Now push that right shoulder down. Get ready for your whoop walk. Sit back, 
Keep your heels down. All right, now whoop, walk, slow your body. Good, let's turn to your left. Now Kirsty, find me, look at me. Look up, shoulders back, sit down, heels down. Good, step with her. We raised six kids with Pantley Party. They all had chores to do, they all turned out to be responsible adults. Part of that, I'm sure, is due to the hackney pony and showing the hackney pony. What makes a hackney uh, useful in other disciplines outside the show ring is the fact that it's a, it's a purebred horse that um, can do just about any job and can do it well. It's a horse that uh, has a confirmation that's capable of being ridden under saddle, driven, it can pull carriages, it can be used for um, an abundance of jobs and it's, a, it's the aristocrat of the show ring and of the show horse world in respect to its a natural ability to lift its legs and uh, hold its head in the air. To, uh, to allow that, so it's a, it's a great breed to do just about anything with. The horse has to be paying attention to what I'm saying. He, he can't second guess me. He has to be really cute to, okay, you're telling me to go right there, and there might be two options that are only, you know, six inches apart, and he has to say, oh, you're telling me to go to the right of that, that post, not to the left. So, so what I find is that really the saddlebeds do have the mind to do pretty much whatever you ask them, you just have to explain, this is what we're doing now. And then they say, okay, I can do that. And how do you want me to do it? And then they do it. So if you take them in the show ring and say, okay, I want your ears up and your eyes rolling back and, and really, you know, looking like you're on fire, they can do that. And then when you say, okay, now I want you to relax and stretch down and, 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 and do that, they can do that. And then when you say, okay, now I want you to gallop full speed through the hazards, you know, he was having fun. You know, he just, you know, his ears were up and he was just, you know, rolling along having a great time. The great thing about the Saddlebred is that they are so versatile. So, you know, if you find that right horse out there, you could show him as a Western horse, you could show him as a Hunter horse, you could show him as a Pleasure horse, you could ride him on the trails. Um, he might be a lead line mount for one of your small kids. He might be a horse that your um, older parent could drive and show in harness. So, they are incredibly versatile, and that's one of the greatest things about the Saddlebred, and also about the Hackney, that they're, they're easy to get into. So the Hackney horse, a beautiful uh, big gelding, 11 years old, uh, shown really outside uh, the, the normal uh, uh, Hackney that we see in the show ring. We, today was shown in, uh, in hunt seat attire, and um, really nice big moving horse to, to show the versatility of the breed and, uh, and what the breed is capable of. Um, what's really interesting is the confirmation of that horse uh, in the frame that, uh, that he was in. Fits in for any type of riding and, uh, and it's nice to see uh, a Hackney uh, do something that we, we normally don't see. I started with the Hackneys because I, I had one and I thought, you know, there's, there's a lot of Hackneys that haven't maybe made it in the show ring that are still, you know, powerful athletic animals that could do other things. And so I started doing combined driving with them and I've had a lot of fun, and uh, you know they're still great movers. So you know that's that's sort of an easy thing. Um, I think some people shy away from them because uh, you know if you're if you haven't worked with hackneys, they seem like they're little little madmen. Um, but um, you know they have their moments of being a little bit excited, but they come right back and they're quiet. You know I can gallop around and have them jumping up and down in the hazard, and then drop the reins and walk out of it. Um, so they're they're uh, you know they're very versatile and super athletic. This young lady is, is uh, trotting, doing a posting trot, and I want to speak a little bit about how her position is. Um, a lot of times the saddle seat riders are criticized because their legs are not fully engaged on the side of the horses. And uh, there's a very sound reason for that. The uh, touches are, are more sensitive to these breeds, and therefore when a leg is applied, or a, a bridle is touched. It's a little bit of a lighter and quicker uh, timing. Uh, the other denominator that our riders work toward is understanding 
that the horse moves in a vertical as well as a horizontal plane. So we're constantly working our horse uh, forward and then back to us. Uh, most of the horses next, if you can envision in your mind, um, a little seahorse. That's the ideal uh, head carriage representation for a saddle seat horse. Uh, the, the American Saddlebred is actually a, um, a product of five different breeds of horses. The Arabian, which is the foundation horse for all breeds, the English Thoroughbred, the Narragansett Pacer, the Standard Bred, and the Morgan. Each one of those breeds gives the American Saddlebred a unique characteristic. Very nice. And halt. Good, just let her stop and stand a second. We reach down and give her a good pat on the neck. People say, well, they look at the pictures and they say he's not using his ears. But he is using his ears the way we want him to because he's paying attention to the driver. It's a little bit of a, you know, the same thing of, as an actor. You know, an actor can go on and, and act in a certain way, but that doesn't mean that the person is what you see on the screen. So when you, when you take a, a, a saddlebred out of the show ring and you, don't, and you tell him, okay, now you don't have to do that. Then, then they don't. Uh, as you are seeing, this young lady is taking a Western lesson on the saddlebred horse, nice. and the instructor is just giving her a little bit of quality time outside and enjoying this gorgeous day. And when you're ready, let's pick up a lope from your jog. There's lots of right leg. Very nice. Nice transition. Slow and collected, and relax and soften. Reverse and walk. Very nice usage of your leg to help push her around. Good, now a little left leg. Try to keep her on that straight line. Okay, let's lope again. Very nice. And now let's bring her back down to a jog. Just sit deep, use your voice. Very nice. Good, just put a little bend in your right elbow. There you go. Just relax and soften. One cluck. Good. Now Julie's back with our uh, new rider in the hunter equipment. This is the same little mare. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, and our rider's working with her Very to get her nice. to flex at the pole a little bit. And you'll notice right, on our rider that we are adopting the traditional hunter style of position where we have a close contact leg and our hands are in a little bit different um, position. All right, let's go ahead and pick up a canter. Very nice and smooth. Good, nice and steady with her head. Nice and light and soft with your fingers, maintaining that lower leg contact. Good. Okay, perfect. Let's let her halt for a minute. Stop and stand. Give her a nice pet on the neck. Good job. 